Hello and welcome to Property Summits, the must-watch show for property investors and developers alike. I'm Emma Birchley and I'm joined as ever by a panel of top experts in the property world. Now, first off, we have seasoned developer, investor and author Nicholas Warwick. We have Richard Bush, a man who knows all there is to know about crowdfunding and peer-to-peer -peer lending. We have Ranjan Bhattacharya, a mentor and YouTuber. He's founder of SucceedInProperty.com, the UK's leading training provider for commercial property developers. I'm also joined by Dave Ford, who knows a thing or two about construction after 40 years in the business. Also here is John Howard, who's bought and sold 4,000 houses, apartments and developments in the UK in his lengthy career. Well, hello, gentlemen. Lovely to see you again. Um, so there's been so much talk, hasn't there, about um, a downturn in the housing market. Would you say that it is a correction or is it an actual full on crash, John? Well, interesting you should come to me first, because, mm. of course, I'm the most experienced uh, uh -huh. of, of the group here. Uh, oh, oh, uh, and I've survived three property recessions and they're all different. And uh, this one is, I'd say it's a downturn at the moment. I did predict that the second half of this year on my YouTube, I did predict that it would get better. The market would get better second half of the year. I've now sort of looking to change that a little bit because I just think that it's, it's tough out there. It's tough out there. People have got a mortgage which has come up for renewal. They're probably paying double, maybe treble the amount they were paying originally. And that's got to have an effect. And it doesn't always have an effect within the first month or two. You know, it's an ongoing situation. Um, and you've got a number of the major house builders saying they're only going to build 50% of the houses this year than last year. So, that, the, and these, these top 10 house builders are sharp. They're on the ball. You know, they are very, very professional. But just because they're not building as many homes doesn't mean we have to, We have to duck and dive to make our living to, 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 to live and have the lifestyle we have. Uh, but, but these big public companies, they're not like that. And, if, and they say, no, we're not building, or no, we're not buying anything, not buying any land at the moment, they just stop automatically. And that has a massive effect on the market. So I, I think we've got a downturn. I think it's going to take the time to get over it. It's all about interest rates, all about confidence in the market, um, and no help from the government. Uh, you know, the, the, the help to buy is finished, and, and, and that hasn't helped either. So I, th I think it's a downturn. I don't, sometimes you get a downturn and it's a slow decline. And then other times it's a big drop. I think this is a slow decline and that concerns me. And why is it a slow decline? Well, people are, um, the point there is just because house builders aren't building as much housing doesn't mean that vendors are going to sell for a cheaper price unless they're distressed. So I agree there's an, Nicholas, an element of the market that's distressed. Absolutely but it is. But that's, that's the bit that will be a slow decline. Everyone else that can afford to hang on will hang on. And I think people see this as a relatively short-term recession. I don't think we think this is a four or five year recession, do we? I don't think anyone on the panel would argue that. Well, that's your opinion. So, people's. No, that's fine. Um, we're talking one to probably two years, um, depending on how rapidly we come out of that. But that Why demand, do you think, uh, um, what are you, some expert on that, are you? How, 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 I'd how like to think know? I've done a few <laughs> things around property in my time. Not quite as many time. as me. We're not technically, <laughs> but I, oh, I come on, boys. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a competition. <laughs> I, think, I, I, I think, John, I mean, with this one, I'm not sure how much experience matters, and there's nothing wrong no. with it, new, being a new kid on the block. Because no. as you said, each recession is different. And the thing that's fundamentally different about this one is, and I'm not sure whether the new house builders are the barometer. Because new house builders are predominantly selling to people, well, they're selling to people that need to get a mortgage today. Yeah. The thing that's changed between now from 2008 is that in 2008, we had a massive proportion of people, I'm talking about owner-occupier mortgages, who had 95% and more loan to value. Really now, uh, they are not so not over leveraged. Uh, interest only mortgage in the a homeowner market is, is dead and gone. They're all repayment mortgages. Um, and then the affordability test, the non status loans and the self certs and all of that for owner occupier loans, they have just dwindled away. The affordability uh, criteria that they brought in after the last credit crunch is far more stringent than it was before. Yeah. So, for that reason, it is a slow burn it, because owner occupiers are 
protected by the rules under which they got Rancher. their mortgage. That's good then, isn't it? Yeah. We, so are, we, we are agreeing. Which will, up, which will we, keep holding up the price. We are, we are agreeing it's a slow burn. And one of the other reasons it's a slow burn is because a lot of people on fixed rate mortgages, mm. which are coming off um, so, you know, a third a year or whatever it is. So I think, so, I think Richard, something you said uh, earlier um, when I was talking to you earlier off screen that some like four point something million people are, are, have been on fixed rates and are coming off them or have come off them or in, or in the process of coming off them this year to, to variable rates. That's massive. That's a massive. These people may have been paying £500 for their mortgage. They could be paying £1,500. So what in reality does that mean for those people? What decisions are they going to have to make? Well, first of all, they're not going to move to a bigger house because if they could afford it originally, they can't afford it now. That's the first thing. So, so lack of transactions is a big problem in the housing market. Um, secondly, the ones that um, perhaps their circumstances have changed can not no long, longer afford their mortgage, so they're going to have to sell. Can they sell and get out with their shirt on the back, or are they, or are they going to hand the keys back? Because you know everybody I meet who's new to property thinks the sun always shines. It does not always shine. You got to it's ride a the tough storm. market. You know, every 16, 17, 18 years, whenever there there is a property recession, prices go down, and people have got to wake up and smell the coffee. Yes, and I agree, but. Um, there's a lot of talk about crash or correction, and I think um, and, and I think the two words are used interchangeably. But a crash, the technical definition of a crash is more than a 10% fall in a 12-month period, and a correction is less than a 10% fall in a 12-month period. Now, because of all the measures that were put in place after the 2008 crash, um, it's predicted. Uh, it, the most likely scenario is that we are going to get a correction, meaning less than 10% fall. And one of the reasons for that is because so many people are on fixed rate mortgages. Before 2008, homeowners were on variable rate mortgages. So that means that the pain is a softer not the it's a softer whole market. Yeah. Uh, it also means, that on an economic standpoint, the tool of interest rates manipulation is a bit of a blunt instrument because so many people are unaffected by immediate changes anyway. Uh, so for all those reasons, um, and this is not me saying it, but the, the leading um, sort of real estate consultancies that put out forecasts and all of that. Mm. How like, often, how, by the way, how often, how often, I'm not being funny, Ranjan, but how often are they right? Um, I, no, I would rather but, prefer to stick to my own, my own uh, assessment. assessment and information, as, as all of us have got vast experience. I mean, but Richard, how often are you right, John? Well, quite often. Yeah. What do you think, Dave? I, I think I agree with John. No, Thank Dave. You, Dave. Oh, Dave. <laughs> Top man. Dave. No, no, I, do, I, I, think, I think it's a, a slow burning one, but, but <clears throat> I'm um, sort of the same age as John. Yeah. I've been through the same amount of recessions. What I find different about this one is previous ones, without being a financial expert, you could sort of half predict when things were going to appear. It, it depended on interest rates in Europe, output from America, blah, blah, blah. You could sort of follow it. But what we've had the last few years with the pandemic, the quantitative easing, the, the mad trust economics that lasted, I don't know, two weeks or something, I, I really don't know how anyone in any certainty can predict what is going on. But I'm going to say that this show is meant to be to, to help and educate people. Um, there, there's still opportunity if you want. There is opportunity if you and want to get out there. Again, if properly. I'm buying, it's, it's a, a crash. crash. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm selling, it's a soft landing, and uh, that you know that's just no, the I nature think. of a dealer trader, isn't it? You know. But but um, yeah, I, I think uh, we've just got to be careful. What we've got today has been predictable. Uh, yeah. I predicted this on my YouTube a few years ago, yeah. and I'll tell you why. It's because during COVID, there was an excess of money printing in the UK, um, and and it was only the reason why we didn't have um, Zimbabwe inflation and all of that was because everyone else did it at the same time. So relatively, everyone printed a ton of money. And the thing is, you print a ton of money. Why didn't we have immediate inflation during COVID? The reason we didn't have in immediate inflation is because no one could go out and spend it. There was no velocity of money in the economy. As we came out of lockdown, everyone started spending all this money and that had, had the inflationary effect. So 
in interest rates could only go up because the only way inflation has ever been curbed in any economy has been to increase interest rates. So everything we're seeing today has been predictable. And don't forget that, that inflation is going to have an onward effect over the next few years of propping up the house prices because real assets will inflate yes. in line with inflation to some degree, not necessarily fully in line. So in the same way that um, you know the transactions increased after yeah. COVID through spending, um, the transactions in property will increase over the next couple of years gradually. So I think it's definitely more of a soft landing, certainly not a crash in my opinion. I think when we did this series of shows six months ago, we thought there'd be a much harder crash, didn't we? Um, now my feeling is soft landing and, and there's signs of positivity and green shoots in the distance already. Yeah, but Your turn for the crystal ball, Richard. Mm. I don't do crystal balls. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> what do you think then, based <laughs> on <laughs> knowledge? Facts. That's it then, isn't yeah. it? Fact. <laughs> I tend to agree with Ranjan on this. Um, and, but you're, you're both saying the same thing. You're saying mm. it's a gentle softening. Mm. And I tend to look at how well are the developments that we're funding currently selling, and they're still selling, and they're selling mm. at or above predicted prices. So whilst there are areas where prices are going down, you know, we, we're, we've managed to avoid those. I'm sure we won't manage to avoid them entirely, but there are parts of the market that are still going up. And that's because of this, this um, recession, as you call mm -hmm. it, but this house price correction mm -hmm. is driven by external factors and interest rates. It's not driven by unemployment. It's not driven by other recessionary factors that we had in 2008. But otherwise, there wouldn't be areas that, that are surviving. And there are areas that are still going up well, in price. As you know, it's a micro market, isn't yeah, it? And every precisely. area is slightly different. But I mean, we've got uh, six estate agencies in Norfolk. So we're at the sharp end of this. You know, we see it every day. I get the results on a Monday morning, uh, 10 a.m., by the way, before 10 a.m. And, um, you know, we aren't doing very well. You know, nobody's doing very well estate agency wise. So, and 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 if if no one can, if people can't understand that, then I'm oh, sorry, sorry, but that's, that's just a fact. So, John, you're saying the transactions aren't happening. No, but those that are half, happening, half, the, the transactions, transactions are hard. What they were, literally. So, those that are happening, are they mm. at ten percent, fifteen percent less than they would have been six months ago? I, I, I would say that in a state agency, every four price reductions equals one sale. So constantly, every good agent in the country at the moment is forcing down the prices from where they were originally. They're saying, right, you need a price reduction, you need a price reduction to get a sale. So yes, I would say 10, 15% uh, reduction on what they originally were, between five and 15, I would say, mm -hmm. depending where it is, mm -hmm. uh, to, get a, to, to, uh, to get a sale, um, definitely at the moment. We've just touched on different areas being affected in different ways. Let's look at the big, broad picture. Let's look at the UK. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, where are the places where property prices are being hit greatest? Is it London? Is it um, Norfolk? Where is it? It's or is that to, a bit? It's hard to be specific. Not work but like I think that. The key is, is is generally some of the poorer areas that are not as connected. There's less infrastructure, and there's less employment. Those are the They're areas less desirable. Less well. desirable to rent. You know, the rental market is propping up a lot of the country. Certainly from an investment point of view home ownership, um, you know, people buy a home for a home, not for investment, but if they've got one eye on the capital value, you want to be in a stronger, well-connected area. I think also, fundamental apply. I mean, John mentioned this, um, micro-markets. It's micro-markets, not just in area, but it's also in property type. You know, there are areas where there's a glut of one-bedroom flats that yeah. you can rent over, them, over but supply, they're difficult to, to yeah. sell. But there are other things like, you know, if you're looking at executive houses, for example, five-bedroom detached, you know, a 1930s house uh, with single brick construction is not going to sell as well as a modern one, you know, yeah, mainly because of the running costs, costs yeah, of the yeah. older five bedroom house. So it's not just micro market within areas, but micro market in property type and also yeah. micro markets within age of construction and energy efficiency and running costs. So there it's, must be it's some far more broad patterns. There is, there is a broad pattern. No, there aren't. There, well, I don't think, think there is. Yes, you I think there is. Okay. Buy Let's I'll tell you what it is. Yes. Buy an Ipswich? <laughs> of course, by an Ipswich. <laughs> the last places in this country, last areas in this country to go up are the first ones to come down. That's a fact. So the last places to get to go up in price are the first to come down. Because, they're, because they're always the weakest. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think it's really good. Pretty good. Bit of Richard. There you go. That doesn't make sense to me. But of course it makes fine. sense. Why doesn't it make sense to you? Last in, first out. All of that sort yeah, of it, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't make sense. Of course it does, because it has taken so long for the market to, 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 to drag them, them up. To drag them up. They're the weakest. They're the weakest economy, the weakest mm. area, and that's why they come no, down the, the quickest. No, the other way of it explaining that, if they come up okay, at all, the, if other they come way, at all. the other way of explaining that is because those last areas to rise have risen because of ripple effect. Absolutely. Because the other areas, Bottom. the main areas, have gone up, and people can't afford those, so they're going into the secondary locations around yeah. them. The weaker uh, so areas. So the ripple, ripple areas cut back first. I think people, you might as well go back. You're, fine. you're, you're thinking, thinking as a banker, banker not as a property investor. Right, let, let me throw something out there. With this cost of living crisis, is there an opportunity to buy in these cheaper areas because people want to downsize into cheaper areas now? Is that the Primark of property? That's not how I've Primark seen it. That's not how, that's not how <laughs> I've, that, I've seen it over the last 40 years. I don't date and save. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Mayfair, Fortnum, and Mason. I, I think the way that we tend to look at it is to look at the buyer profile rather than the area. Because the people that are less affected by the current factors of interest rate rises, um, et cetera, there are people who are immune to that. There are, and, yes. And as, if you're providing a product in an area where, where they are buying, mm. then you're fine. Who are mm. the immune ones? Well, it's not a, borrowing. A good example <laughs> is we're doing, um, it, it's, a, it's a PDR conversion. It, it's in a village. It's, it's two offices into two four, four bed houses, million pounds each. They both sold. They're not even finished yet. Mm. And, so, and, and they're being bought by 50 plus year old people moving from outside the village into the village. Mm. And they're, they're immune to interest rates because they, they, you know, their mortgage is minute, if, yeah. if anything. But, but that's, that's interesting that's you should say that. But, but, but in Norfolk, <coughs> it's a market market, but, but, it, but it's audience-based rather than yeah. geography-based. Yeah, I understand that. But in Norfolk, what you said, I understand what you're saying, but in Norfolk, 50% of our buyers are cash buyers. It's still having, are they? 50%? Yeah, 50 percent. But they're still having it's still, still having an effect on them. It's having an effect, but they're still having an effect because they become cautious. And if you've got um, you know, husband and wife or two partners or whatever they're called these days, I never I never know what to quite quite what to say. Um, two lovers or whatever. Um, <laughs> you've, said enough. Stop. you've said enough, you've said enough, I'll carry on. Good um, and one of them is is ambitious and wants to move to a bigger house, and the other one is cautious. The cautious one's got the great excuse in the world not to move. So, well, let's leave it, let's wait and see what happens. So that's what happens. It becomes a negative situation, um, you know, and... and like but but said, they don't not move and they don't not buy. They might pay slightly less, but, but they're still moving. And they're what, still what buying. They're would, not impacted by interest Richard, what I would say is eventually the people that can afford it go, oh, we've waited long enough. Come on, let's get on with it. Eventually, but not yet. It's too soon. I think too sorry. soon. Property's like a big boat. It takes a long time to stop and turn and come back the other way. And in it, it, as a criticism of my own career, I've I've acted too quickly on many occasions because you know it's a slow business. Sometimes you've got to be careful. One thing that I've noticed is that when you look in the papers. You can see one article that tells you that this is going to happen, that interest rates are going to do this to um, inflation or, or whatever. Then you read another article the next day that completely contradicts mm. it. And I think if you are someone who is waiting to see what happens, um, you might be feeling, you know, quite concerned. Well, there's an old saying, if in doubt, do not. Yeah, yeah, so that's uh, and, and that's exactly what people are doing. Yeah, but I have an issue with the press actually because the press, mm. um, you know, no offense, um, <laughs> um, have a tendency Media. to pick up on you know, the, and there's multiple reports that they refer to. It might be the Halifax mortgage yeah. interest, it might be land registry data, it might be Zoopla uh, information, it might be right move information, and there's another hundred more. They'll pick up on the one that's negative and yeah. make that the headline. Yeah. yeah, and actually. The majority of it might be more positive and they'll delve into a micro market where things are particularly bad that'll be the headline so you know don't read everything you believe get into industry specific press watch shows like this to hear what real people in the industry are actually doing and that's going to be your best barometer for you know a bit of I agree you know, with that. a bit press, of informed it's news just looking to uh, it's clickbait journalism yeah uh, and that's all it is they're looking for people to read and watch yeah i would argue against it just being clickbait i have to say i mean oh. if a report comes out though as a journalist you report on it mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and there are things coming from all angles and there'll be one journalist who 
whose perspective of, of what they want to get across might be different to someone else's. I think the, the yeah. thing yeah. that I'm trying to get across, I think, is that there are a lot of people that produce statistics. So a lot of companies yeah. for PR, they will put out a statistic, but they have to have an interesting spin on it. Otherwise, there's, it's all been done before. So if, they can, if, some, if company X can say, we've got some data or a survey that proves you know, uh, whatever, then that, if, it's, if that whatever is something newsworthy, people will pick up on it and report it. And that tends to be what happens. I call it the bad news. Uh, it's, it's never good news, is it? Dave. It doesn't sell papers. John touched on it earlier that the house builders are uh, reporting up to 50% uh, less volume that they're going to build. I oh, see Persimmon said they're going to build 40% less houses. But on the other hand, in all the people I know, I know people, they're probably building more than a thousand houses in total, you know? So um, it's a bit hard to say overall geographically the UK, what's mm, going to happen. And, and like it does micro market. Me, I'm looking to buy a new house. I'm a cash buyer. I'm not really bothered about the price. Whether it's up, down, I'm not going yeah, to say. Yeah, but Dave, you're very experienced with, within the industry. You've been in it a long time and you're very confident with yourself and your ability and, and, and you've been very successful. So I think that's different to the average person who perhaps is in another job, you know. Oh, not, yeah, not, yeah. Not I in the industry, that, personally. Yeah. Plus also, you gave the Norfolk example of 50% cash mm. buyers, but I don't think that's the case, is it? In Is Norfolk a bit different? To well, I mean, it's a quality area that everyone should move to, Emma. <laughs> yes, it is. Absolutely. There's loads everyone, of people with loads of dosh coming from London to buy nice big houses. And also second homes. Yeah, yeah, second homes. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's a little bit different. A little bit it? different, maybe, yeah. Yeah. But I think um, the, the thing with the major house builders is uh, a lot of the stuff they're building is, is for first-time buyer and uh, um, starter family type of situations. And those are the people that are most challenged most vulnerable. with the affordability and, the mortgage, and getting the mortgage and having a deposit saved up. So other, uh, and it doesn't tend to be so much the major house builders that are building the five bedroom detached no, or the more luxury end. It's the more... They tend to be the more smaller boutique developers. And yes, the market for those is still strong uh, because the buyers of those have more cash and equity. And I think so, that's, for, for people watching this, I think that's an interesting thing because at the end of the day, if you're building five or 10 units, you've only got to five, find five or 10 buyers. Mm -hmm. Persimmons has to find a thousand buyers. Yes, yeah, so that's the fundamental find five difference. Or 10. Yeah, so how 15, are you... 15,000 buyers there for the moment. Okay, there you go. So if it, the challenge is to find a small number of buyers, you can, you can tell your product for that audience and you market it to that audience and you will sell it at the price that you're, you're looking for. I, I the think, market I is, a, is I don't irrelevant. Dis I, don't, I disagree with that, Richard. I th the market will dictate not, the, not what you build. The market will dictate the pe people's opinions of the market will dictate. But the market doesn't exist, John. The market is just a collection no. of, of, it is. It is just we love a collection to end on disagreement. <laughs> Seems to be me all the time. Who <laughs> are you? I Who wonder. You? Well, that is all we've got time for. I think we can broadly say that you don't think there's going to be some whopper of a crash. No, I think that's right. Well, thank you all very much for joining me. I think we're pretty clear then uh, that not a crash. No. Not a crash, but an easier kind of correction. We'll see what happens. All right, thanks very much. And we'll see you next time on Property Summits. <laughs>